Now that we have discussed the two graphical representations, now comes the third and the final graphical representation of data called the frequency polygon. What is a frequency polygon? We know that a polygon is an n-sided closed figure. So a frequency table also defines an n-sided closed figure using the histogram. And that n-sided closed figure is called polygon of n-sides. So let's see a polygon in brief. Let's take a histogram for example. For example, I have a histogram with all marks of students. Let's say this is the polygon. Now here I have the marks obtained. So here I have a histogram so let's see how we can understand a frequency polygon for this, where this represents marks of students, map marks of students, and number of students. So the students who got the marks between 40 and 50 is 10, is how we understand the frequency table. And who got 50 to 60 is 20, and 60 to 70 is 10, 70 to 80 is 30, 80 to 90 is 5, 90 to 100 is 10. That's how we understand this histogram. So frequency polygon is obtained when I join all the midpoints of the width of the histogram. So I pick all the midpoints here, here, here. So a polygon is obtained if I take exactly a line passing through the middle and cutting here. And here exactly cutting at middle point we get a polygon so a polygon which is a b c d e f g and h is called frequency polygon so here we define in this example problem a b c d e f g h is called a frequency polygon. A frequency polygon with n sides closed figure. A histogram with all its midpoints joined gives us a frequency polygon. Now that we have understood a frequency polygon through a histogram, now the question comes, what if the histogram is not given? Can we construct a frequency polygon without the help of a histogram? Yes, it's possible. If we can use the formula for class mark. So this session is about constructing a frequency polygon without the help of a histogram. Frequency polygon
constructing a frequency polygon without its histogram. If the histogram is given, it's very easy because we pick the midpoints of the top bars and just join and we get an n-sided closed figure called frequency polygon. But if the histogram is not given, it is very difficult to pick the middle points and hence we have some other method which we use out here. So let's see how we can construct a frequency polygon for a given data without the construction of the histogram. For example, I have the data with class interval and frequency. So in this case, say my class interval is the marks of range 40 to 50, 50 to 60, 60 to 70, 70 to 80. and 90 to 100 and say the frequency is 7, 3, 4, 5, 8, 2, 8, 2. So here is the frequency through which I am going to construct the new column called class marks. Class marks will help me in constructing a frequency polygon without the help of a histogram. What is a class mark? The class mark is nothing but the upper limit plus lower limit by 2. That's how we use the formula. So the formula for class mark is upper limit plus lower limit by 2. If I take the first class interval, this is upper limit and this is lower limit. So upper limit plus lower limit gives me 55. The class mark for this class interval is 45 and the class mark for this class interval is upper limit plus lower limit by 2 which is 55, 65, 75, 85 and 95. This is how I get the class marks upper limit plus lower limit by 2. Once we get the class marks, then I pick the points and plot. So here I have the point with 45 and 7. My x coordinate is 45 and my y coordinate is 7. In the second case, my x coordinate is 55 and y coordinate is 3, 65, 4, 75, 9. So once I get the coordinates, it's all about plotting on the graph paper. So I pick the marks 50, 60, 70, 80, 100. Six, eight, ten. So the first point is forty-five seven, so it lies forty-five and approximately out here. Next fifty-five and three, which lies fifty-five. This next is sixty-five four, which lies. Here. Then 75 and 9, 75 is here and it shoots up to 9 out here. And then I have 85 and 8 which comes 85 approximately down and 95 and 2. So finally 95 here. And two. Now it's about continuously trying to join each of the points. 
So I start from the least value, which is out here. So somewhere out here, I have 35, which I pick and join. I get a polygon which is called a frequency polygon A B C D E F G H is a polygon which is a frequency polygon given by this region frequency polygon constructed without the help of histogram using the class marks class mark equals upper limit plus lower limit by two construction of frequency polygon now that we have discussed certain properties in statistics now comes the most important concepts in statistics measures of central tendency As the word speaks about measures of central tendency, what do we mean by measures of central tendency? Or what is its significance in the branch of statistics? As it says, measures of central tendency. Now imagine I have the collection of 200 data. Now in that 200 data which I have collected personally, I want to know how I can find the relation between each data there might be definitely some core data which can make us have the tendency of depending on the entire data. So here we are going to see that central value to, uh, upon which the rest of the data relies or depends on. So such things in mathematics are studied through measures of central tendency. There are three measures of central tendency identified in the branch of statistics. One is mean, median, and the third is mode. So these are the three different types of measures of central tendency identified. Let's discuss these in brief. So let's take a note that The three measures of central tendency are assumed to study and analyze the entire data based on their values. The three measures of central tendency are assumed to study and analyze the entire data based on their values. So this is one of the significance of measures of central tendency. Let's see in brief mean, median, and more. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.